This is Rap the News. It is now the time for sackcloth. I've been having sackcloth. And now it is the time for the world to put on sackcloth, put ashes on themselves, and mourn. And we're going to let you know why you should do that and the meaning of it. And the only people ever recorded in history that were saved were the people who put on sackcloth and put themselves in the dust and threw ashes on themselves, which are the men of Nineveh. So let's find out why and what is the importance of sackcloth. Sackcloth definition. Clothes used in making sacks or bags, a coarse fabric of a dark color. So it has to be dark clothes. You know, it don't have to be a potato bag made of goat hair. And if you don't have goat hair, God understands it's whatever you put on to be humble. It's, it's a humbling outfit. It is nothing extravagant, so it cannot look good. It was used also for making the rough garments used by mourners. It's most likely why people at funeral wear all black right now. So we're going to start with Isaiah 53. I clothe the heavens in black, and that is why you're wearing black. And I make sackcloth their covering. So it's black. Everybody understand that? Ashes definition. The ashes of a red heifer burned entire when sprinkled on the unclean made them ceremonially clean. And so it didn't make you pure. It was just for the ceremony when they sprinkled the ashes on you. It made you clean for the ceremony so that God can forgive and accept, you know, your repentance. Numbers 19, 5. While he, the priest, watches the heifer is to be burned, its high flesh and blood and intestines is to be burned all. And then when, when, when the, it turns to dust, then that dust is supposed to be sprinkled over the heads of the people to make them clean. Esther 4.3 in every province <clears throat> to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews. With fasting, weeping, and wailing, many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And so a part of wearing the sackcloth and being in the ashes, fasting and weeping and mourning for your sins, we, we're not mourning for uh, just to be crying for no damn reason. God is going to punish every, he said, I'm coming back to punish the world for their sins. Uh, if you knew how you was going to get punished, you would be crying already. Because God is going to punish you with these meteorites and this fire. That is how he's going to purge Israel. And another purging is that uh, before you cross over hell into heaven, you know, uh, you're going to have to be confronted with all your good and bad deeds, meaning that it is a day of retribution, that anything that you did wrongfully to other people has to happen back to you before you enter. And so God says, I am going to purge you with the spirit of judgment and burning. So to cover the head with ashes was a token of self abhorrence and humiliation. The ashes had the ceremonial efficiency uh, or efficacy of purifying the unclean ashes about the person especially on the head were used as a sign of sorrow you have to feel guilty for the wrong you do or else you love evil and you're going to go to hell mourning God hates all pride so in order to be heard we must be in our most lowly humblest position plus a sorrowful repentant state even men and women shaving their hair completely bald because hair is pride. An example, when God is going to destroy the men of Nineveh, they were all saved when they followed a certain course of action. Not that they shaved their hair bald, but they did everything else. Isaiah twenty-two twelve. so they fasted. They put, Everybody put on sackcloth. Everybody got down in the dust. Everybody put ashes on their head and everybody mourned. They didn't put on coronavirus masks when it was going to be destroyed. They put on sackcloth, people. So don't get the twisted 
with the world telling you to put on. We ain't supposed to follow the common run of people on earth. We ain't supposed to follow the way of the, of the world. Everybody knows that. You know, we are not supposed to be conformed of this world. Isaiah 22, 12. And in that day that the Lord God of hosts called to weeping, he said, everybody need to weep and to mourn and and to baldness. Again, everybody is bald. So a woman is not proud when she has no hair, unless you're a dyke. And girding with sackcloth and fasting. So it's all a part of it. Isaiah 58, 5. It is such as fast that I have chosen. Again, it is such as fast that I have chosen. A day for a man to afflict his soul. That means deny yourself, right? It is to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Yeah. Jeremiah forty-eight thirty-seven: For every head shall be bald. Every head shall be bald. And every beard clipped upon all the hands shall be cuttings, and upon the loins sackcloth. That's what you wear. And so it's a thing of willingly and unwillingly now. So the people who are smart, they go ahead like me. I got on sackcloth. I've been wearing sackcloth because we don't know the time, only God do, but we know that it's close close and we need to be as all pride is getting ready to get destroyed. That is what the sackcloth is for. That's why you're shaving your head. That's why if everybody is down in the dirt, everybody got the raggediest outfit possible on, everybody is bald-headed and dirty, how can you be proud then? See, that's how much God hate pride. That He want everybody bald, everybody's beard clipped, and everybody is, is going to be dressed up and draped in sackcloth. Leviticus 13, 40. And the man whose hair is falling off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. And that's why God is allowing the head, hair to fall off your head, so that you stop being proud of your hair, gentlemen. Ezekiel 27, 31. And you can let science tell you something, but I believe God. And they shall make themselves utterly bald for you and gird themselves with sackcloth and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitterness of welling. So when should one not cut their hair when he said everybody should be utterly bald? It's if you a big old dyke and you wanted to look like a man anyway, you should not cut your hair because that's pride for you to have a bald head. God is trying to stop the pride. So in cutting your hair is going to make you proud because you a dyke. You should not cut your hair. And then people think I'm wrong, I'm right. Because if everyone is in raggedy clothes, down in the dust, bald, fasting, and mourning, you have minimal pride happening, thus being in the most humble state before your Lord, God. And that's where God, he don't want you uh, bucking your chest up to him. Jonah 3, number 3. So Jonah arose and went up to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a seemingly great city of three days' journey, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet in forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown, destroyed. So the people of Nineveh believed God. See, everybody want to blame the messengers and stuff. And so they looked past the messenger and then believed God. They believed that, hey, this man came from God, and basically we need to listen. God is going to destroy us. And they proclaimed a fast. So everybody is fasting for these 45 days. And they put on sackcloth. And from the greatest of them to the least. So it ain't just the poor people put on sackcloth. It's the rich. Take off your suits and your high-powered dress and put on some rags and get down in the dirt like everybody else. And covered with sackcloth and they sat in the ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. So the king today in America would be Donald Trump. Right? Do you think if he was told you got 45 days that he going to humble himself down and get in the dust. That's why every other nation, they, they kings and leaders are so proud that they would rather go to hell 
than to listen to God. Well, this was the only king in the world that ever submitted and humbled himself and his people down to the Most High God. And they were the only people ever recorded to be saved that are Gentile. And he caused to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble sin. Neither let man or beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. And watch this. The beast is Gentiles. Because who going to put a frog in, in a cow on some pants or some sackcloth? It's stupid. And cry mightily unto God. And beast ain't going to, you ain't going to tell the cow to cry unto God. He's talking about Gentiles. Yet let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence. So not only put on sackcloth and everything else, you have to stop being gay, carnal, contentious, lying, deceiving, murdering, molesting, and raping. You have to stop all that shit, you know, and there's nothing worse than a liar. Let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God is going to turn and repent and turn away his fierce anger that we perish not. And God saw their works. Not grace. God saw their works. So the only people ever saved. Was saved by works. See how they lied to you. In the Bible. They added that grace. To get you sent to hell. They turned from their evil way. And repented of the evil. Not uh, Jesus descended down to them. And basically took away the sins of the people. They're they trying to give you a free ride. God's own people ain't never had a free ride. If he do that to his own people, why would he get the Gentiles a free ride? Y'all got to see by that I, he died for your sins crap when he said he never ascended to the Father and that no man can kill him. It, it's either one or the other. And God repented of the evil which he has said that he would do unto them and he did it not. And we know God don't repent. It's just God turned away from destroying them because they humbled themselves down and they wasn't arrogant. So arrogant definition, having an exaggerated sense of one's own importance and abilities. And I put that video about Donald Trump yesterday so you can see an exaggerated sense of one's own importance. Nobody give a fuck for Donald Trump really. You know, if it was him or you going to hell, you would kick that bitch in the hell. Pride definition, a feeling of deep pleasure derived from one's own achievements. So what happened when God returns and he finds you proud? You are going to get destroyed. For all, 1 John 2.16, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of God. It's of this world. So the world is of Satan. You know, Satan is the one who's going to offer you the world. And so when you proud, you are the world. First Samuel 2, 7. But the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth us up. Not you. People think because I got educated, I made myself smart. I made myself this. I made my penis. I made my big boobs. I made my big butt. I made my height and you did nothing. God made that. And he gave you the brain to make yourself rich. You wouldn't have did it. If God did, and God owns everything, you and your brain. Luke 6, 24. And woe unto you that are rich, Trump, for you have received your consolation. That I means you see, receive the good, your good in this life, and you'll get nothing in the next. You ain't going to heaven. Uh, your heaven is right now. You're going to burn in the next life. Leviticus 26, 19. And I will break the pride of your power. Now is the time to buy the homeless something. Now it is the time to take care of the orphan. Now it is the time to give largely in charity. Because you're going to want to do it all in the end to save your soul. And God ain't buying it. You're going to burn with everything you got left. He's going to use that for fuel for your fire. I will break the pride of your power. How is he doing it? The dollar is collapsing, huh? And the yen and all of that, it's collapsing, ain't it? And the people can't go to work. And so what? Money was making you proud. Wealth, you know, position in life. 
And when they take the money from everybody and the dollar go and everybody bankrupt and you can't get food, then how is your pride then? God know exactly what he's doing in his infinite wisdom. Isaiah 2, 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up. Everybody in the entertainment field who getting unworthy praise from people. All praises is due to the Most High God of Israel. No praise is due to anybody. Why are y'all clapping for them and proud of them when God hates pride? Everybody is backwards and he shall be brought low and the loftiness of men shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be made low. All them stars faces is going to be in the dust. Either they're going to do that willingly or unwillingly and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the name of the Lord alone is going to be called. Anybody calling on Jesus or anybody else in that day will burn up and go to hell. All the gods from underneath the earth and the heavens, says God, underneath the heavens and the earth will perish. Y'all got to understand. Isaiah 4, number 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, he and shall purge the blood of Jerusalem, from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment first. What does that mean? Judgment is that whatever you put into this balance system comes back out to you. Balance. Whatever you sowed, you shall reap. Whatever you measured shall be measured back to you that day, says God, when he purging you, black man and black woman, when he purging you, Jerusalem, Everything's going to get measured. So if you knock somebody out, I guarantee you, you're going to be knocked out. Everything that you put in evil, you ain't going to worry about the good. The good's going to be nice, but you're going to be worrying about how many people have you harmed and hurt because that is the spirit of judgment and people is going to come back and pay you back. You know, if some people having dreams that they dirty uh, in a dream, if you're dirty, that's your sins. It's saying that you ain't going to make it into his kingdom because you're filthy. If you got on white, then you might, you know, after he purged you. And he's, he's telling you the purging process is going to happen. And you ain't in the garden. You got to get purged and pay for your sins in the earth before you go there. You Everybody got to cross over hell to get to judgment day. Humble to your knees, send the now it's time for you to pay. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So after everybody pay you back, then he's going to burn the remaining of iniquity that is in your hearts. And I'll say it again. He is going to melt down that hard heart of yours and burn it and refine it and wash away the dross, the filth from your heart, the desire to be gay, the desire to be carnal, the desire to be contentious, the desire to be wrathful and murderous. He's going to wash all of that away. That is by the spirit of burning. So you understand what's happening. First Corinthians 3.13. Every man shall be made. Work shall be made manifest. Not, you know, grace. Work again. See how it contradicts itself. For the day shall declare because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try. So you're getting tried by the fire. Everybody is going to get tried over the fire of hell. To see what sort of work it is. So we going to supposedly go through the tail of this planetary system that no, not too many people believe in. And then that planet is hell. And we're going to be tri tried and tested over this fire. We got to go through those meteorites and then brimstones, right? <coughs> and guess what's going to happen? Woe to the man with iniquity on his back. Because you're going to get burned through and through, says God. And he says, it's going to hit you in your flesh, going to pour out like dung. Zechariah 13, 9. And I will bring a third part through the fire. So we're going through the tail of that damn planetary system. And we'll refine them as silver. And it's, it's, the fire is coming right up to you. If you got sin, it's going to burn it out of your ass. Those meteorites going to thrust you. People is having, I it's three people so far didn't had a dream that the meteorites didn't hit them. And knock their ass backwards. Lifted them up off the ground. So if you get hit with a shotgun blast. It will lift you up off the ground. And blow you back to whence you came. 
But if you get hit by a meteorite, it's going to knock you a football field distant probably away, depending on how, how fast it came in and how hard and what direction it hit. And I will try them as gold is tried. How is gold tried? It is melted down and then you wipe away the dross so you can have a pure product. They shall call on my name then because you are in pain. Then I will hear them when you clean. And I will say, this is my people. And they shall say, this is my Lord. Why sit there and wait to God come and handle y'all asses? Why not do it yourself right now before the time? Second Timothy 2.21 If a man therefore purges himself from these things, all God wanted you to do is stop sinning. The fire and is, uh, is coming to attack sin and iniquity. Sin and iniquity is what the Torah said no to. Not the Bible. Sin is transgression of the law, the Torah. And this is what God is burning when you transgress the Torah. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meant for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work, if you stop yourself from sinning. So right now is the time to, to humble yourself down and put on some raggedy sackcloth. You know, and whatever you do, stop being prideful in anything. Your money, your look, your hair, your penis size, your boobs, your ass, whatever. You got to stop being prideful or God is going to break. Like he promised. Every word of God is a promise. Break the pride of your arrogancy. This is Rap the News. <laughs>